Hello and thank you for joining me on my video series, Installing and Configuring IBM Domino 9 Social Edition on CentOS 6 64-bit. I'm also going to cover 32-bit stuff. I am your host, Devin Olson, and this is part one, Installing CentOS. Since IBM introduced uh, Domino 9 Social Edition a few weeks ago, I've been kind of chomping at the bit wanting to get uh, a video series out and, and, and showing how to do the installation and configuration on a CentOS um, Linux operating system. The target audience for this video series are people who have some familiarity with Notes and Domino, uh, maybe junior administrators or maybe, more importantly, developers who need to be able to set up a, a fully functional development server, that kind of a, a setup. Um, people who might be comfortable with the Windows operating system and installing and configuring a, a Domino server on a Windows environment, but who have some concerns or some perhaps some fears uh, with the Linux environment. So we're going to go through and we're going to install it on, on a Linux CentOS 6 64-bit installation. And um, hopefully I will alleviate some of those fears. Now I'm running this uh, recording on an iMac and I'm using a virtual machine rather than just a standalone box simply because it makes it easier to do the recording and that kind of stuff. I've configured my virtual machine. It's a pretty minimal machine. There's not a whole lot going on there. It's uh, got one CPU, uh, a gig of RAM, and 20 gig of hard drive space. And that's it. That's all there is on this machine. Now, if you had gone to the CentOS website and downloaded it, let me pause this just one second here. If you had gone to the CentOS.org website and downloaded the latest version of CentOS 6 64-bit, you would have gotten an ISO, which is exactly what I did. And then, in a normal world, you would cut that ISO to a CD or a DVD, and then you'd put it into your machine and turn it on. And then, when you did that, you would get this screen that I'm, I'm seeing here. But you know, obviously I'm running this in a virtual machine and I'm running it from a, um, an ISO image. So I don't actually have a, a CD or a DVD in there. But when it comes up, this is the screen that you'll get. And I'm going to go ahead and choose. I want to install or upgrade an existing system. So let me get focus on this and say, yes, let's go. So uh, CentOS is going to go ahead and start booting from, from the ISO image to try and begin the installation. It's, it's pretty easy. Uh, uh, I'm doing a minimal installation and I'm going to be doing this so that I'm running the entire operating system from the command line. Uh, when, when your disk comes up, it's going to want to test the media. I'm doing an ISO and I've done it before. I have no reason whatsoever to test the media. But on your initial installation, the first time you use a CD or a DVD, you absolutely want to test the media. It takes about 20 minutes to run through and check the whole thing. All right. Screen's jumping around a little bit. This is the in fun installation window that you will get when you install CentOS. Even though you're doing command line, you have to do the installation graphically, which I think is a bit silly, but be that as it may. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and choose English. English for my keyboard layout. I'm going to use basic storage devices. Um, this video is not intended to show you how to do partitioning or, or, or to explain how partitioning works in Linux. That's a completely different area. I'm just going to go ahead and discard all data that I've got here. For the host name, I'm going to type in demo.learningxpages. Um, L-E-A-R, hang on, L-E-A-R-N-I-N-G-X-P-A-G-E-S.com. Okay, there we go. So there's my host name for the machine. This is the physical name of this box that it's going to be running. Okay, I need to select a time zone and I'm in not actually in Detroit but that's the closest time zone city to me. I'm going to go ahead and hit next. You need to put in a root password and I'll explain the password in a minute once I get this running. I want to get this started so I can not waste all your time. I'm going to tell it to use all the space. This is the partitioning choices again. Um, we're not going to explain how to do partitioning in here. I want to go ahead and say yes, write the changes to disk. Okay, the system's starting. While it's starting, I can now speak a little bit. Uh, so all this is running in the background. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Linux, 
and this is your first introduction to Linux, I need to explain a little bit about the root user account. Um, in a Windows environment, pretty much anybody can do anything. I mean, there is some security in place, um, but you know, as long as you've got rights to the system and you've got a login account, you can kind of mess around with it. More to the point, once you're at the console, you can pretty much do anything you want. Um, that's not meant as an attack on Windows. Yes, Windows has some security and later versions in place, but it's just, I don't want to get into a, a, a fight about it or anything like that, but I want to explain what the root user is, or the super user in Linux. The root user has God ability and can do anything they want to your operating system, and the operating system will not stop it. Um, if you're signed in as root, you can do anything. So. That being said, protect your password for root, use a good password for root, write it down, keep it locked up. Later in this series, I will show how to create other user accounts, and we'll use those other user accounts while we're going through and doing our stuff, but for the time being, you know, we just have to have root to get the system installed. So be very cognizant of the security levels of your root account. So the system is, is coming close to finishing up here. I was thinking I would want to do some you know, video magic and, and pause it, but uh, we may not need to do that. It's, it's coming close to finishing. Um, the rest of this series um, is going to include configuration for the um, Linux environment, meaning instructions on how to configure the Linux environment using a command line. And then we'll do some domino-specific configuration. Oh, look. I'm going to go ahead and reboot because it's finished. Um, and here comes the operating system rebooting. It's pretty quick and pretty easy. Not that hard a thing to do. So the operating system is rebooting and we're going to come up here and in just a moment, there we go. We'll see that. So the system is rebooting and as soon as it finishes rebooting, we're going to be back at the login screen. And there's the demo login and this demo is the name I gave to the machine. So, thank you for joining me. This is the end of this first part. Um, we did a quick install. It took us under about seven minutes at most to get the, the, the operating in installed, or the operating system installed. Uh, the next video in this series, we will do minimal configuration of the operating system, and then we'll kind of continue on um, in later uh, editions or episodes of the series to get Domino installed and stuff. Thank you very much for joining me. Once again, I am Devin Olson. Um, my, you can check out my Learning X Pages website to learn about X Pages development and my personal journey. You can go to my blog at devinolson.net or, and you can also go to uh, Notes in Nine, a wonderful site run by my friend David Levy, Levy, where he has all kinds of cool instructional videos on how to do pretty much everything with Notes.